Hi hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to get started in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2020. The CC means it's on the Creative Cloud and you have access to this using your school login and password. But you can only install it on two machines, that means one at school and one at home. Now be aware you need to be able to run Windows or Mac OS in order to install this software. So a Chromebook's not going to work. And you're going to need to have a sufficient amount of RAM. Anything below about 6 to 8 gig makes it run very, very slowly. Now when you first open up Premiere Pro CC 2020, you'll see this splash screen here. And what's great about this screen is because you're always going to be working on the same PC, you'll be able to come down here to your recent files and simply click on whichever project you want to open and it will do all of the hard work for you. The reason you'll always be on the same PC is because when we edit at school we can't edit across the network, it's just too slow. The file rate for video transfer needs to be much much higher, so you're actually going to be saving your video files directly to the hard drive of the computer that you're working on. The result of this is you have to work on the same computer every time, otherwise you won't be able to find your project. As we're using Premiere for the first time, we're going to come up here to the new project button and we're just going to press there. And what you'll get is this additional splash screen with lots of complicated looking information on it. All you need to do is give it a name. Make sure that it's in the right location, which for you will be on the W drive. And then as this is a beginner's guide, we're going to ignore everything else and just hit OK. You'll notice when Premiere Pro opens, it looks very similar to Photoshop and there are a lot of crossover similarities. For example, we have different panels, which we can click into, and they serve different functions. But also, just like Adobe Photoshop, when you're beginning, a lot of this you don't need. So I'm going to introduce you to the key areas and show you how to get video files into your projects and how to get up and running with editing. But then it's going to be up to you to remember all of your video editing techniques and to use those to create exciting and compelling video content. So the best place to start is over here in the Media Browser. The Media Browser enables you to simply browse to wherever you have saved your video files and then to select the files from there. Now there is a much easier way of doing it, so I'm going to show you that way. If you go back into your Project tab, so you'll notice across here we can press these little arrows and it allows us to choose any of the panels that are hidden in here, just like on the right hand side when we're using Photoshop. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the drag and drop function to make life a lot easier for us. So over here I've got a browser window that's uh, set up the way that I generally set up simple editing projects. The captures folder is where I save my screenshots, the graphics folder is where I save any graphics that I might have created, my music and sound effects go in another folder and then all of my rushes or the shots from my camera go into the rushes folder. That way it leaves the outside nice and clear for Adobe Premiere to create lots of different files that I'm not going to be messing around with and they're not going to get in the way stopping me from seeing where my shots are. So if I simply go into the Rushes folder you'll see that we've actually got these five items which should be in your tutorial folder at school on the box and you'll be able to just simply select them all, drag them and drop them into Premiere. And then we can close this. Actually, before we go anywhere, let's go into our music and sound effects and we'll grab some music. And then finally, we'll go into our graphics folder and we'll just grab this video file as well. Now, the reason I've grabbed these files is because the Premiere handles different types of files slightly differently. And you'll notice here where I've got video with sound, that's what these two icons mean, Premiere is going to make all of those clips blue. Where I've got just video with no sound, it's going to make them violet. And where I've got just sound with no video, it's going to make them green. What does that mean? Well, quite simply, when we're editing on our timeline, it uses these different colors to help us sort through all of those files. Now we've got all of our project files dragged in here, we're going to quickly walk through the interface. So down in the bottom center here is our timeline. This is where we build our sequences. So we'll come back to this one, this one's very important. Up here is where we can view the video files that are playing in our timeline. And over on this side is where we can look at our source clips, the ones that are in here that we're going to pull from, or where we can add our effects or to mix our audio. Now we can't see anything in here yet because we haven't actually started our project up fully. 
but it is important to note if when you do load up this looks completely different because for example someone's undocked a panel you can just like we do in Photoshop go back into window workspace and reset your workspace to the saved layout so now we've got all of our files in our clip bin and we're ready to edit what we would normally do is come over to file new sequence and set all of our settings so that we can edit our video but what if we don't know what our frame rate is what if we don't know what our frame size is and what if we don't know what our audio sample rate is well actually the new CC version of Premiere makes life a lot easier because we can cancel out of this and if we've shot all of our clips on the same camera we can simply click it drag it and drop it into a blank timeline and it will create the sequence for us and we'll base it on the frame rate and frame size of the clip we've used. So if I show the clip properties, you'll see that we actually find out exactly what our frame rates are. And it means that we're not gonna get any frame jitter or any other unexpected surprises once we start editing our video. So let's quickly talk about the timeline box. Essentially, this is where all the hard work happens. As we add clips by dragging and dropping them in, they create a timeline or a sequence of shots. If we click at the top and you can hear me scrub along here, you'll hear the audio and you'll see the shots moving in the top right hand side, which is our monitor. We could simply zoom out using this bar here and continue to add all of our shots one after another until we reach the end of our sequence and we are done. But editing is a little bit more involved than that. We might want to adjust the duration of some of these shots and there are many different ways of doing that. For a start, we can zoom in and you see when I hover over a clip at the edge of it, I can get a bracket that either goes to the left or to the right. The left bracket enables us to click and drag to shorten a clip the right bracket allows us to do the same on the other side. Now you'll notice that there is no icon at the end of this clip here, but when I drag it to its full stretch, you'll see you get a little sort of gray area on the side that tells you there is no more of that clip available. That's significant because if we want to add a mix, we need to make sure that we are slightly further back so there is some shot left to mix the two together. Now, as I showed you with Photoshop, there are always keyboard shortcuts and the way that we zoom in and out, instead of using the bar down here at the bottom, we can simply use the plus and minus keys. Minus will zoom out, plus will zoom in, and on by the left shift key, the backslash, will enable you to show the entire timeline. And that enables you to toggle where you were and the full timeline. It just jumps back in and out. Those of you who love Photoshop will be very pleased to see that you can also hold Alt and scroll wheel up and you will zoom in wherever your cursor is pointing. Why might you want to zoom in? Well, it helps us when we're working on our audio tracks. And also, if we make this slightly bigger, you'll see that when we scroll along our video track, we actually get a little thumbnail showing us which clip we are looking at, which makes life a lot easier. If at any point you end up with gaps in your timeline like this and you simply want to remove them by moving everything down, you can click to select the area in between, right click and say ripple delete and that will move everything down on your timeline. But be aware that, let's just undo here, if we have different clips on different areas of the timeline, let me just drag the audio down onto a different channel so we can overlap these two clips. When I remove this with a ripple delete, it can cause parts of our timeline further down to go out of sync. So if you don't want to use the ripple delete, you can simply use the select tool, which is the V, same as the move tool in Photoshop. Select all of those clips and slide them down yourself. Make sure when you're editing not to leave any black gaps because that will appear as a flash. So when I show you here, you'll see a little flicker Hello. of black. So you need to make sure that you get rid of all of those tiny little gaps otherwise you're gonna get flickers of black here and there. So we've just quickly looked at how we can drag clips onto the timeline, how we can shorten those clips, how we can drag them around. We can even change the order of them. We can right click to ripple delete and we can overlap video layers showing us just like in Photoshop, whichever clip is on the top is the one we see as opposed to the one underneath. And this kind of video editing would be absolutely fine and you could leave it there. But if you want to advance your skills ever so slightly, let me just quickly show you patching in from a source monitor. 
So if we double click on one of our shots, it will load on the left hand side in our source monitor. What we do then is mark where we want our clip to start with the mark in button. Move along the timeline. Mark our out. And now we can insert that into our timeline in two different ways, using the insert or the overwrite edit. So for now, let's just paste in using the overwrite edit. And we can see it appears on the timeline and we can do it again and again and again, if we so wish. Now let me choose another clip to make it obvious what we're doing. This one will do. And we're gonna choose a selection of this. Uh, let's take the bit where he sits up, mark out in, and mark out out. Now if I wanted to add this into my sequence, I could use the insert edit, and you'll see it moves everything down the timeline, actually breaking the clip that we were on, in order to insert it into the timeline. Let me hit Control Z to undo that. Now watch what happens if I hit overwrite. It actually just pastes clean over it and gets rid of the shot that was already there. But I hear you say, why are we using destructive editing techniques in a package that's designed to be non-destructive? Well, that's because Premiere isn't expecting you to use an overwrite edit on the same video track. So let me just undo that and show you what I mean. Here, you've got what are called patching. So I can actually say, instead of putting the video of this video onto video track one, I want you to put it on video two. Instead of putting the audio on audio one, I want you to put it on audio two. If I do an insert edit here, you see it will break the clip, but it remains very clear as to what I've inserted. And it enables me to go back and overlap these shots to work on my audio to get nice J and L cuts with my audio. Now let me undo that. And let me show you what happens when we do an overwrite edit. Well, now you can see it doesn't actually destroy the clips that were underneath it. It pastes him onto a different video track. And as we know from Photoshop, whatever's on the top is what we see. Now you'll notice here, he's already sat up. So let's scroll further down the clip, find out that point where he sits up. So his feet start moving and I can simply drag this down to the point where his feet start moving. And now we can time our edit much better. And if we want to get in there and adjust anything, we can simply adjust the length of the incoming or outgoing frame. And you'll notice that because they're overlapping clips, we can see the outgoing point where we're marked and the incoming point where we're dragging to. So I want his feet to be just leaving the bench. There we go. And that's how we get our match on action edits. Now you may have noticed that the audio is now overlapping and there's several things that we can do. We could, I'm just zooming out there, we could remove the audio underneath it by simply moving our audio from clip two over the audio on clip one. But unfortunately, what usually happens there is our takes aren't perfect and this take, our dialogue's in a slightly different place to this take. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna undo it and I'm gonna show you another way. And this involves using the effect controls. So I'm going to mark the very beginning of my clip and zoom in ever so slightly so you can see what I'm doing. Now, if you can't see what you're doing, you can actually make these tracks a little bit bigger so it's easier to see the wave formats and it usually helps us to get our edits slightly more accurate. So if I just mute this track and have a listen to track one, what's she saying? Hughes. Excellent. So he's saying confused, but we don't want to hear it there. Fuse. Excellent. Let's mute this and listen to the second track. Perfectly normal. Welcome to the simulation. So I want to keep confused from the top track and welcome to the simulation from the bottom track. But if I grab a hold of this audio and start moving it, you'll notice something happens. That's right. My video has now moved as well. So the great thing about Premiere, if I hit Control Z, is we can right click and that allows us to unlink the video and the audio. Now I can simply select the audio clip and slide down. And that way I'm not affecting where the video is. But you've got to be careful now if I start moving this video clip around, I'm going to be out of sync for my dialogue later on. So what I normally suggest is you click and shift click both sides of that clip 
right click and relink them again and that way they are once again matched up and married so let's have a listen what happens now oops we need to unmute it that's for a start Cues. Excellent. Welcome to the simulation. Now we've got an issue. We've got overlapping audio from this track. So how can we deal with that? Well, I did say we'd look in this top panel here, go to effect controls and select the clip that we want to change the audio on. What we can do is come over here to these toggle animations. And if I simply press that stopwatch, it enables me to add what's called a keyframe. You'll see it appear here in this zoomed in window, but you also see it appear on our timeline. Why do we care about that? Well, it means that if we move slightly further down the timeline and add another one, we can actually grab hold of this rubber banded clip and we can adjust the audio. So we will fade out to allow this clip to work. And then if we slide further down, when we want to go back, we can simply mark where we want to fade back in, add another keyframe, move a couple of frames forward, add another keyframe, and then we can bring this clip up. And likewise, we can move on to this clip and make sure that we don't get that overlap in audio by turning on our animation, adding a keyframe, moving further down the clip, adding another keyframe and pulling down on the line. And that's a simple way of creating layered audio without having to worry too much about going into the effects tools and looking for crossfades and audio transitions. But how did that work? Well, let's zoom out and find out. We press play under our source monitor or spacebar in order to play. Excellent. Welcome to the simulation. The what? This is the ancestor simulation. A thousand years ago, this is what it was like to be human. A thousand years ago, this is what it felt like to be... Now, obviously, we're in the wrong part of our clip, but you get the general idea. But you will have noticed that as we played these two clips, we go from a relatively quiet Excellent. take... Excellent. Welcome to the simulation. ...to a very loud the take. What? And if you notice here, we've got an audio meter to help us balance that. So we're roughly at around minus 18 decibels here. And we move very quickly up to around about minus 12 decibels. So what we could do is just gently pull down this line to do a bit of maths, minus five off it, and they should match much better. Excellent. Welcome to the simulation. The what? This is the ancestor simulation. Now I did say that these little arrows in the corner were quite important, so let me show you what I mean. If I drag into this clip a little way, we're going in 19 frames, I put these two together, I can now come over into my effects bin and find inside video transitions and dissolve by cross dissolve, and you literally drag and drop that onto your video track and that will create a lovely dissolve for you. And that adds to a beautiful ethereal effect. Hello, how are you? If you wish to lengthen or shorten your dissolve, you do it the same way as you did with the video clips. And if you want to, you can click on it and slide it backwards and forwards to have it start later or earlier. But you'll notice I can't move it any further this way. That's because there is no clip left. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I delete off and I move this onto another track, when I drag this out, well, they're on the same track. When I drag this one out, you'll see where the clip ends on both sides prevents us from having our dissolve begin any further back than here because there is no incoming shot there. So let me uh, just drag it back, pull it down, and we'll add that cross dissolve again. And you'll see once again, I cannot drag that cross dissolve any further back than the beginning of the incoming clip. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind when you're choosing where your edit points are going to be. I am an AI. Hello. I'm help you get How started. are you feeling? So what I'd like you to do now is to pull all five of these video clips into your browser and then drop them onto your timeline to create a sequence. And then see if you can edit this sequence so it makes sense using multiple layered video layering your audio and also remembering that you can unlink using right click in order to move around your audio and your video tracks independently but don't forget to shift and click to link them back together again so you don't accidentally knock them out of sync now you might have noticed on some of these clips we've got this little green dot 
that's simply a marker which I added by mistake, which I've only just noticed. And we can put those simply by selecting the clip that we want to put them on and pressing M. It enables us to find areas of the clip much, much more quickly. And in order to remove them, you just press M to bring up the menu and you can press delete. So again, park on this one, M to bring up the menu, press delete, oh, I missed it. Park on the mark, M to bring up the menu and press delete. And you'll notice that because that clip had been repeated many times, the mark stays on all of the clips in exactly the same place. And welcome back. So now you'll notice what I've done is I've added in clips from my clip bin into the order that I want them to happen in. And I have alternated video one and video two as I've been going along. So it's easier for me to work out where my editing is going. You'll also see I've added keyframes to adjust the audio in my clips, to ramp in and out to avoid some clicks, and also overlap them ever so slightly by using the unlink and relink feature. But when I play my video now, we have got gaps in our audio, which sound really weird. Have a listen. Hello, how are you feeling? A little confused. Excellent, that's perfectly normal. So what we can do to smooth out those gaps is to bring in some MP3 music. So I'm simply going to drag and drop that onto audio track three. And we can edit that audio in exactly the same way as we can video clips. But one of the additional tools we haven't looked at, which makes, which makes life a lot easier, is if we zoom in and we, for example, want to loop a part of our audio, we can actually come over to the toolbar here, choose our razor tool, which enables us to chop small sections out but also it enables us to loop and reuse certain parts of our music. Let me just undo that and zoom all the way out. Now you'll notice that our audio track is way longer than we need it to be. So going back onto my move tool, I'm just gonna shrink it down so we're not worrying about all of that timeline. Backslash to show it all on the screen. And obviously when I hit play, it's gonna be way too loud. You can see how hot the audio is here. So what do we do? Well, we could come in and individually add all of these key points, but there is one more panel we're gonna look at, which is over here, and it is the audio track mixer. Now, if we have audio on an entire track that we wanna adjust in one go, we can actually come over here and you can see audio three is here. I'm actually gonna rename that. And I'm gonna call it my music track, and you'll see that it actually changes down here on the timeline as well. And I'm just gonna grab this slider and move it down and that should bring down the overall volume. And as we listen, still too loud. Bring it down a bit further. Hello, how and are you feeling? Adjust this on the move. A little confused. Excellent. That's perfectly normal. Welcome to the simulation. The what? The ancestor simulation. A thousand years ago, this is what it felt like. And just before we go, there's one more thing I want to show you, which is completely different to the way things used to work in Premiere CS. CC has totally upgraded the way you do titles. So it used to be that you would need to come into your clip bin, create a caption, and you then use a separate interface in order to edit your captions and to overlay them onto your video clips. But it is much, much, much simpler now. In fact, all you need to do is look for the area that you want to stick your caption on. And then over here in your toolbar, look at that type tool. We just click on the type tool. Wherever it is on your clip that you want to type, you just click and, and hey presto, we have now added onto our video two track this title, which we can actually grab hold of, make bigger, make smaller, move it around and get it exactly where we want it. Now, obviously we don't want it to cut straight on or cut straight off. We want it to be nicely fading in and out. So we would drop into our effects, go into our video transitions, dissolve, cross dissolve. And I'm gonna throw one at the beginning and one at the end. And then when we press play now, our caption will fade up and then fade out. Hello. Easy peasy. Now the problem is, if you don't want to use that font, 
we do need to jump up into our FLEC controls panel. So you can double click on that to make sure that you have it selected and then go over into effect controls. And you'll notice that up here, we actually have a text and it tells me what the text says, the Garden of Eden. And I can flip this down and down the rabbit hole we can go. Quite simply, we can change the font. Well, that's highly inappropriate, but I think we'll just go with Zombie Slayer just for a bit of fun. You can move that caption back in slightly. And then we can also change the color by clicking on fill and let's make that red let's make it super scary the garden of eden and as you scroll down you'll see that we can add things like bold italics and additional information about rotation so we can make it rotate ever so slightly Ooh. possibly not ideal that way up there we go the garden of eden and we can also adjust the opacity which means it'd be slightly fainter as in we can see through it ever so slightly let's see what effect that has now you probably noticed that it looks very very blurry that's because we've set to one quarter resolution to preview so let's switch it back to full fat and now we can see it in all of its horrific glory hello how are you feeling a little confused now there is one more thing now we're inside the effects control and effect panel that i wanted to show you earlier but i forgot so on this shot here where he's talking, I don't want to be quite so wide here, but unfortunately I shot it in a fairly wide shot. What can I do? Well, if we select that clip and we come over and we look at motion, we've actually got a scale icon as well. And we can click to drag and we can zoom in ever so slightly on that clip. And we can also grab hold of the position to move it around. Now, you've got to be careful. Once you get more than a certain distance in, it is really obvious that we're zoomed in on it because it is essentially a digital zoom and it does look a little bit clunky and horrible. But at a pinch, it enables us to adjust our shots in post-production. So let's have a look at that. Hello, how are you feeling? A little confused. Excellent, that's perfectly normal. Welcome to the simulation. The what? So hopefully this tutorial has given you a brief insight into how to get things started, how to put information onto the timeline, how to make sure the timeline's at the right settings by simply dragging and dropping your clips in, how to preview things in your source monitor, how to review things in your program monitor, how to lay your clips on alternating tracks to make your editing more seamless and to encourage you to be using these J and L cuts to overlap your video and to create a much more professional and advanced editing technique and also how to add some basic simple effects and to adjust them using your effect controls. So for the rest of the lesson I'd like you to continue with your Garden of Eden edit and see if you can create a finished sequence. A hint, if you've got it right it should be almost exactly 60 seconds long. So explore, experiment and above all have fun.